Okay, so let's walk through a static routing example. So here's our network, and you'll see we've documented for each network the network ID and then the IP addresses, the individual devices. And on the routers, we've identified the interface and the IP address. So uh, if you look at this one right here, S00 on R1, it's got an IP address of dot one. The network is 172.16.3.0 slash 30, so its IP address would be 172.16.3.1. So, hopefully that makes sense. Um, let's go ahead and look at doing some static configuration, some static routing configuration. So, R1 is going to automatically learn this route and this route because it's directly connected. But it's not going to learn this one, this one, or this one. So, we're going to need to add those in. Let me do that on the full side. And here's what we've got. So we're going to go en and config t. Now our command is ip route. And then we're going to type in the destination network. So I'm going to start with 172.16.1.0 slash 24. Now notice that we're writing the route to the network, not to the host. And that's almost always the case. We'll almost always write it to the specific network. Now, so I put in my IP route, my destination network ID, and my destination network mask. Now I need to choose either the next hop, which is going to be the next IP address that I'm going to hit, which would be this one right here, or my exit interface. <clears throat> so for R1, we'll use next hop. So that's going to be 172.16.3.2. And then it'll be the same thing because we'll have the same next hop to get to this network and the same next hop to get to this network. So I'm going to add the next one, IP route 172.16.3.4 slash 30 through 172.16.3.2. And then for our last network, 172.16.2.0. So it's IP route 172.16.2.0 slash 24 through 172.16.3.2. And then I'm going to end out, and if I do a show IP route, I should see my three static routes. Okay, that looks good. Let's go to R2 now. Now this one, I'm going to do the same thing, except that instead of writing my routes to the uh, next top IP address, I'm going to write them using my exit interface. And so this one's going to learn these three networks because it's directly connected, but it's not going to learn 172.16.0 or .2. So we'll start global config IP route 172.16.0.0. And again, it's a slash 24. And this one's going to go out serial 001. So what we're looking at here is it's going to come out this interface, come in this direction. So next top is always going to be the next IP address we hit. Exit interface is going to be the one we go out. So when I hit enter, it gives me a warning. Default route without gateway. If not, a point-to-point -point interface may impact performance. Well, in this case, we're on a point-to-point -point interface, so that's going to be just fine. Let's do the same thing coming to 172.16.2.0, but for this one, we're going to use this exit interface, which is serial 001. So it's going to be IP route 172.16.2.0 to out serial 001. <clears throat> All right. Uh, and then let's do R3. Now in R3 I'm going to do something that I normally don't like to do, and that is I'm going to use a default route. And I can get away with it because there's only one route in, one route out of this network. I personally normally don't like to do a default route unless I'm doing a route to the internet. But in this case I want to do it because I want to show you how. So en config t and this is going to be a default route which will include all three of these routes so i can get away with just doing one on r1 i just specify all three of these individually on r3 because it's a default route it'll catch everything including all three of them so it's going to be ip route 0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0. and that's how we do that default route it's quad zeros for the network ID and for the network mask. And then I'm going to go ahead and do it using that exit interface of serial 001. And it'll give me the same warning. This one, if I do a show IP route, remember in R1 we had three routes. Here we just have this one, which is static, and the asterisk indicates that it's a candidate default route. 
and then the 0, .0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 indicates the same thing. Okay, let's see if our static routing worked. So I'm going to add a ping from PC0 to PC1, from PC0 to PC2, and from PC1 to PC2. Now the first two failed, but that's because of ARP. So if I double click on those fire buttons, I see success, success, success. All right, we have our routing completely configured using static routing.